Aloha and welcome to Ehana Kako on the ThinkTech Bro Broadcasting Network. I'm Joe Kent, Vice President of Research at the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, filling in for Dr. Kaylee Iakina, President of the Grassroot Institute. The Grassroot Institute is Hawaii's only think tank working to uh, advance individual liberty, the free market, and limited accountable government. And today on the program, we're talking with Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. The Tax Foundation is a watchdog that helps keep an eye on Hawaii's taxes. Welcome, Tom. Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks, and today we're going to talk about all the new taxes, the, the blitz of taxes going through the legislature this season. But before we do that, I wanted to ask you about the foundation and its mission and uh, how you got started there. Sure. The, um, as you mentioned, the Tax Foundation is a, uh, a taxpayer watchdog agency. We keep tabs on what's going on with the legislature, and uh, we're there down uh, testifying and giving comments on all of the bills that are going through. You know, a, a number of the uh, bills are complicated. Uh, tax is not an easy subject to begin with, and lots of members of the public and legislators as well uh, have no idea what what's what's really before them. So it's it's up to pe us and people like us to try to explain uh, what's going on. Uh, if we weren't here, it would just be the tax department explaining <laughs> the tax bills to them, and you know, the, so some people think that's not a not balanced enough. Right. Well, I mean, at Grassroot, we, we consider an informed electorate, an informed citizenry uh, crucial to helping to build a better Hawaii. So, um, But uh, along with taxes, there's a lot of big tax increases going through this year. And um, it's almost like if, if it were a weather forecast, we might say that uh, there's a tor tornado going through, a tsunami going through right now of tax uh, proposals. and. Uh, and some of them are very big. What are some of the big, biggest ones that you're seeing? Well, um, you're, you're right in that there are a number of proposals that are kind of swirling around the legislature. Um, actually, there's more there this year than, than I've seen you know, in any of the years I've been in, in this seat. Uh, I'm not sure why, but um, there are a lot of big ones. I suppose, One of the, I suppose that some of it has to do with it. It's not an election year, so sometimes the tax proposals go up. But even compared to non-election years in the past, it's still a, a heavy year for tax increases. It's, it's still a heavy year for tax provisions in general. Mm -hmm. yeah, one, of the, uh, one of the big ones uh, is our rail tax. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, you know, our, our mayor is constantly on the news and trying to uh, convince the people and the legislators that uh, the surcharge that's right now, right now on Honolulu's general excise tax uh, should be extended in perpetuity. That means forever. Mm. Now, and forever is a very long time. So now, just to be clear, we have a general excise tax, and this rail tax is on top of that. It's a surcharge on top of that, but it only lasts for uh, a few years, but now they want to extend well, it. More, more than a few years. More right, than now, <laughs> right now it, uh, it extends to 2027. 2027, and the bill wants to extend it forever. Yeah, well, the, um, uh, the mayor wants to extend it forever, yes. Okay, and uh, wh where's that going right now? Okay, so uh, at the moment, it, it's kind of gone through a tumultuous path. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, it's first hearing uh, you know, the current version of the bill uh, went through the transportation committees in both houses. Mm -hmm. The House Transportation Committee gave uh, gave it 30 years, a 30 years extension as opposed to perpetual. Okay, so instead of forever, they they knocked it down to 30 years. Right. Um, on the Senate side, they they came out with a with a bill that was um, very very confusing, uh, and the uh, even the committee report said that there were co some contradictory provisions, but there. Um, uh, their aim was to keep everything alive. So, uh, so they, they had a couple of provisions that extended it to forever. They had one that, that cut it off at a certain point in time, at which point a, uh, a general half percent increase in the GET was going to kick in. They also put in a uh, low income uh, tax credit to um, mitigate now, the regressivity. Now, hang on, before you go to the, the um, tax credit. You, you mentioned that um, they wanted to do just a general 
uh, GET increase on top of the rail. So we've got the, the GET, we've got the rail on top, and now you've got another tax on top of that, you're saying? or uh, That's, it, it could be. I it mean, could we, be. We, we, the way we read it was uh, it would basically uh, ratchet up to 5%. Okay, and it has some uh, um, credits in there as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for, for low income taxpayers, because mm -hmm. they, they typically will bear the brunt of um, GET increases because they have to, you know, uh, GET is, is imposed on necessities as well. Mm -hmm. So the general ex excise tax, to be clear, is uh, a tax on all things, all goods in Hawaii. And that ha and tends, services and services and lots of other stuff and that tends to hurt the poor. Yeah, because they, well, I mean, everybody has to buy uh, you know things to live. Mm -hmm. um, but it, when when you have less money to start with, uh, you, you you need to spend more of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the rail tax that's going through, and of course, it's uh, by the time this airs, who knows? Maybe it will uh, <laughs> it will change again, but it's it's tumultuous. Yeah, the the, um, the current version uh, that came out of uh, Senate Ways and Means Committee uh, basically said, okay, look, we've, we've had enough of this. So, t uh, in the past, we were taking away ten percent off the top and keeping it for ourselves. We're going to give that back to you, but that's it. Mm -hmm. No extensions, no nothing. You make do with what, what's left, period. That's basically the, me the message that came out of Senate Ways and Means Committee. And the Tax Foundation, you folks, took the st you had issue with that. And you, I think you took the uh, state to court over this 10% uh, tax skim off the top. And uh, you were questioning what, um, h how the tax rail tax would be used. Is that right? Yeah, the, the, the basic issue that we had was that, okay, you have this 10% skim mm -hmm. that was being withheld by the state, used to fund statewide programs, but only people in Honolulu are paying it. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't there something wrong there? Right. And, and if it was just the, the cost of, uh, you know, collecting the tax on behalf of the city, then we, we wouldn't have minded so much. Uh, but the but the cost per year is like maybe million million and a half, and and the state was keeping twenty five million, so there was a, just a slight disparity yeah. there. Well, it sounds to me like I don't know how you view this, but it look, looks like you may have uh, shifted the issue here, and they actually did um, take that out of out of the bill, or at least one of the bills. Well, you know, if you if you if you talk to anybody in state government, they'll they're not going to say that. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're, yeah. they're going to say well. Yeah, we, we, were, we, were, we wanted to help out a little bit, mm. so, so we're going to help out, but we want the city to basically do the hard work. Right. Well, as in a lot of these bills at the legislature, um, there's good things and there's bad things, and sometimes they're in the same bill. So. <laughs> and uh, another um, tax issue that we're looking at this year is the teacher, uh, the, the tax for teachers, or you might say education. And uh, this is a tax proposal to increase property taxes on certain types of property um, and create a dedicated fund for, the, for that money to go to education. Now, did I characterize that correctly? Is there more detail? Right. Um, th uh, the, uh, the big issue here uh, is that uh, they want to surcharge property tax, right? Because they're thinking, oh, you know, our property taxes are so low. Um, it's an argument we hear almost every year is that, oh, Hawaii has low property taxes. Which right? is true, and, mm -hmm. and, and the reason why it's true is because uh, we generally fund education on a statewide basis. Uh, in most cities on the mainland, uh, the property tax goes to support schools. Mm -hmm. So okay. because we don't, uh, we don't fund schools the same way, then we don't tax the same way as the mainland, and that, that, that ends that's up. That's right. Okay, so then... Um, but now what, what they want to do is they want to basically uh, take advantage of this low property tax and say, okay, um, we, so we want to slap a surcharge on this to, to fund public education. And um, uh, the, the surcharge that they're talking about is kind of substantial, as in um, the current uh, property tax on, in, in Honolulu for a residential property that doesn't qualify for home exemption, that's over a million dollars, mm -hmm. 
uh, is uh, $6 per uh, $1,000 of assessed value. Okay, so million dollar home would be basically six grand you, you, gotta, you, you have to pay. Okay. Okay. The surcharge would be 750 on top of the six grand. Ah. So, so 650 plus 7,500 mm -hmm. uh, would more than double uh, the, the property tax bill for that, uh, for that particular piece of property. Mm. Right, so I, let's say I'm a homeowner, I own a, a house in, in Honolulu, maybe that's cost a million dollars. Um, you might think that I'm very rich, but, um, but a million dollar house, uh, <laughs> that's getting close to the median uh, <laughs> price for a house these days, and now we're almost doubling the tax on them. Okay, but, but you gotta remember a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, this bill has basically two pieces. One is a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. And, and the reason why this is important is because the voters have to vote on it. Okay, but... So in other words, legis even when legis it passes through the legislature, the voters still have to vote on it in order to change the Constitution. Right, because the Constitution now says the property tax is exclusively the province of the counties, right? They own it, they can do what they want. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and if we want to take any of it for a statewide purpose, like education, then we have to change the Constitution. Okay, so there's one bill to change the Constitution, and, and second, uh, there's a second bill to implement the Constitutional Amendment when the, when, sure. when the Constitution does get changed. Mm -hmm. Okay. One bill to create the fund, the other bill to fund it, basically. Well, one to create the taxing power. Right, right. And the other one to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, but the thing that you gotta remember is that the two are, don't necessarily have to be related. Okay, so if they say, Aloha, Kako. oh, vote for this constitutional amendment because we're only gonna tax the rich. The bill might be changed the following year to tax everybody. Hmm. If you give the power to the legislature to, to do the surcharge, they can use it any way they want. So basically the question for the constitutional amendment is, are you going to let them raise taxes or no? They, they may phrase it very differently for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you want to help our keiki? Yeah, you're, you're saying that if, let's say it goes through the legislature and now it's up to voters to change the constitution, to, to vote on this, this constitutional amendment. Well, then they can come through with uh, a, a, let's say, a television campaign with, uh, says, vote yes, vote yes, right? Whereas uh, the, the opponents of a tax increase wouldn't have the money to do these specialized campaigns, perhaps. And, and so it's very likely that voters will vote yes for more money for kids when actually they're voting yes on a tax increase. And they, they may not even realize it. That's the danger. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, that's uh, the other big tax increase, and we ha have even more. Um, there's online taxes, uh, Airbnb taxes, um, and even Obamacare in the mix. Um, wh what do you think about all these new sort of uh, tax um, bills? Well, um, there, there are uh, some bills that are out there to assist with collection of tax that's already owed. Mm -hmm. Okay, like uh, in the online or e-fairness uh, type of a situation. This is like where, you, where you're buying you know, things from Amazon or other, uh, another online seller that doesn't have any presence here. Now, before we go on to the uh, collection of online taxes, we're gonna take a short break, and when we come back, we're gonna be talking about uh, Amazon. If you buy something on Amazon, should you be taxed for it in Hawaii? Uh, don't go away, we'll be right back. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Aloha! How you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gordo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Aloha. Good to, have you, good, to, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? 
Hello, this is Martin Despain. I want to get you get excited about my new show, which is Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. We're going to broadcast on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. We're back, and you're watching a Hanukako on the Think Tech. Hawaii Broadcasting Network. I'm Joe Kent, uh, filling in for Dr. Kelii Akina. Um, we work at the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, Hawaii's public policy think tank working to defend individual liberty and limited accountable government in Hawaii. Today, we're talking with Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation. Um, Tom, we left off by talking about Amazon. So I'm going to go online in Hawaii to try to save money, and I'm going to um, buy on Amazon instead and get the free shipping and uh, get a good deal. But now... But what the law actually says mm -hmm. is if you do that, um, Amazon uh, is not liable for our tax, right, because they're, they have no presence in Hawaii. So you as the buyer are legally obligated to pay the 4%. So in other words, I'm supposed to, when I buy something online from Amazon, I'm supposed to pay a tax to the state of Hawaii. That's right. You're, that's that's your legal obligation. There's a form to do that called the G26. Uh, most people don't know what the form is and, and have never paid this tax. So um, rather than having the tax office try to go after everybody, uh, you know, it would c kind of keep them busy for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, they would rather have the seller uh, basically withhold the tax and pay the state on everybody's behalf. So it's just kind of one big check coming in instead of you know, several little, little rinky-dink checks. Right, but there's a problem with that, which is that um, this, there's not many states that do this, and Amazon isn't really used to doing that kind of thing, except for maybe a few states. Well, and, and, the, re like, and the reason yeah. is because there's a federal constitution, and mm -hmm. the federal constitution says um, uh, that you have to have a certain amount of connection with the state that you're selling into before you're required to uh, fulfill their tax obligations. So um, uh, Amazon is taking advantage of that case and is, as, is basically saying, look, you know, we don't have physical presence in Hawaii, so you can't touch us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And by the way, we're not just talking about Amazon. We're talking about all online sellers in a way. Right. Whichever doesn't have uh, physical presence here. So I think mm -hmm. um, LL Bean overstock. Right. Um, right. You know, a, a number of the big and small. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the way that the state is trying to combat this issue is they're pushing a bill that says, okay, fine. But if you have more than $100,000 of sales into the state, we are going to consider that you have purposefully directed business to Hawaii and we're going to treat you as if you uh, have a presence. Have a presence here. Right. And we're going to go after you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, other states have this type of uh, legislation in place. And the result has been that a, a number of online sellers have come to the table and they've come to the state and they've, they've negotiated with the, with the state regarding collecting on behalf of uh, all of these, all these little buyers. Mm -hmm. Now, we are one of six states uh, where there is no such agreement, hmm. at least in, from Amazon's perspective. Right. So, uh, so, so other states that have done this have actually received uh, tax money from Amazon. They haven't gone through any court battles or legal battles about the law, but they've just, Amazon's voluntarily paid these taxes. Is that right? Well, there may have been some court proceedings, but, okay. <laughs> but, but none, none, none extended. Right. Yeah. Nothing at the Supreme Court or anything. Yeah, so. no, no, no big, big fights. Right. So. But um, I, to me, that makes me worried about, um, well, I really like my Amazon Prime account. Um, I like my free shipping to Hawaii. And I wonder if Amazon, for example, would uh, figure out some way to increase the price for me. But um, of course, that's... Oh, they'd they, they put the tax on the bill, like they do for everybody oh, else. Oh, right. They could, just do, they could just put it on the bill for Hawaii residents, for example. Yeah, like, like they do for any other state that charges a sales right. tax. Right, interesting. Okay, well, at the legislature, um, well, we've been talking about some of the big bills, but there's a lot of kind of little bills that are very similar uh, along certain themes. And one of the themes that we're seeing is Robin Hood. Should we take from the rich to give to the poor? Um, should we um, try to 
give exemptions to the poor and get it paid for through, you know, by taxing the rich more. Um, what are your view of some of these bills? Well, um, obviously, you want a tax system to be, you know, progressive. You you want um, at least in some capacity uh, people to be taxed in proportion to their ability to pay. Uh, the, the GET doesn't do that because it's uh, one rate for everybody uh, w for whatever transaction almost and um, uh, the income tax does do that uh, but the way the income tax is set up right now uh, you, you have antiquated brackets and they try to make up for them for them with uh, you know credit for this or credit for that or credit for the other thing and and it, it's it's getting to be a real mishmash of stuff so um, I'm thinking that a better way to do that would be to to get rid of all the little credits uh, to, and to overhaul the brackets because really uh, it's it's madness to 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 tax people at the poverty line and uh, get them off the tax system they really have no need to file a return which is one of the most complicated government documents that ever exist you get rid of the processing costs and, and you'll have a lot more money to go around. Okay, when you say antiquated brackets, you're talking about um, uh, inf there's inflation and our economy changes and it doesn't fit we, with we the brackets. We start taxing people at $3,000. And that historically used to mean more than it does now where... Yeah, someone... the brackets were set in the 60s. Wow, and they haven't been changed, those levels haven't been changed. Yeah, I mean, they, they've been there, there. There have been things added to the top and subtracted from the top, but the but the lower bracket, the bottom, is the same. Yeah, yeah. has has been essentially the same since the '60s. Okay, and what about the um, just let's say um, I'm in in poverty and I have a family and um, you're probably in the fourth bracket. So let's say the fourth that, from the bottom. And let's say I'm in, in that bracket. Um, what's wrong with giving me like a tax um, credit? So, or something that I can, I can get some money back and um, even though it adds some complexities. In other words, what's the problem with complexities? Number one, are you going to file a return? If you don't, uh, you lose the credit and they can come after you for the, for the tax that would have otherwise been offset by the credit. Okay. okay. So um, a, a lot of people, uh, you know, in, in that income level are not rocket scientists. Mm -hmm. uh, you can try to make the tax form simpler, but it's still a tax form and it, you know, it scares the daylight out of yeah. people. Yeah, <laughs> it scares it out of me too, and I'm not even in that, yeah. Yeah, um, so you, you have to make sure you're reaching everybody, you have to make sure that people are actually filing returns, um, which, which is, uh, I, th I, think, I think, a really uh, big leap, mm -hmm. you know, for some. Why? Why do you think that uh, this year, switching topics, um, we've seen all these tax increase proposals going through. Um, why do you think that there's such a push to increase taxes this year? Uh, wh whether, whether or not you know it, we're in, we're in an economic crisis. Why? Number one, uh, all of our union contracts are up for renegotiation. All 14 public employee unions um, contracts are expiring and that means they're negotiating for higher salaries and higher benefits and that's going to be more money. Right. And, and we told them in, uh, right after the fiscal year ended, hey, we have a billion dollar surplus. <laughs> and they all got the knives and forks out. That's right. Yeah. And then the very next month, <laughs> yeah. they spent $1.3 mm -hmm. And so they then came to the unions mm -hmm. so and <laughs> said, we yeah. have no money. And the union said, what? But that's, that's, the, that's the story that they were trying to sell the union members. Right. Okay. And of course, nobody was buying it. So $1 billion went poof. And the unions, in one month. In one month. And the unions uh, were uh, crestfallen, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and the administration was, was proposing no increases uh, for the next couple of years, mm -hmm. which, which um, f to, to any union is a non-starter. Sure. It's a non-starter. Right. So that's part of the reason for the tax increase, but there's other... Okay. Sec second reason. Um, council on Revenues, which is 
basically developing our budget assumptions for, uh, for the state. Uh, they revised the revenue forecast. They knocked it down quite a bit. Uh, and they, that, that opened a $150 million, $155 million hole. So in other words, the Council on Revenues, you can imagine, uh, they look at a crystal ball and they look to the future and try to predict how much tax revenue the state's going to get. Right. And under our state constitution, our government is supposed to be run by those predictions. Right. So they have to use this, the prediction the Council on Revenues did. And they are showing that we're going to get less tax revenue in the future. Right. And so that's another push to increase taxes. And is there Well, it, it left, you know, they were budgeting based on, you know, the higher number. Right. And COR comes in and says, oh, it's actually here. And they go, oh, what are we going to do with this? You know? Yeah, yeah. So they're trying to make up the difference. And, and the last, maybe pensions. Yes, so public pensions. Um, uh, we have uh, pension plans that basically promise a lot of things to uh, present and retired state employees. We, we promise them uh, health, until they, uh, health benefits until they die. We, we have um, defined benefits for them, which is a, a set amount that's coming up per year, irrespective of how the market fares mm -hmm. and irrespective of how healthy the state is. So they promise this amount of, amount of benefits. Of now, how much we put in, we get a certain amount. We're promised a certain amount out. Right. And, and, and the question then becomes, how do you value that in the, in the present day? Uh, we had been using uh, a 7.5% discount rate, uh, which, is, which is very high. Uh, the actuaries who looked at the, the pension plans said it's too high. And they knocked it down to seven percent, and and that made it uh, that made the pension go from the unfunded liabilities go from eight billion dollars up to twelve billion dollars, and hence the need for more tax revenues. Well, um, well, or or the push for it, anyways. But yeah, obviously, if if the if the debt is much bigger, you need to. Uh, spend more every year mm. to amortize that. And debt. I need to cut you off there because we're at the end of the episode. I want to thank Tom Yamachika from the uh, Tax Foundation. Thanks so much for joining us. And thank you, Joe.